Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having uh, an unbelievable week. I hope that you have gotten things off on a great start, that as you close the week out, you are seeing your plans materialize and your goals achieved. Uh, Even if you are now facing some difficult times and challenges, definitely I can relate. I can understand. I've been there. I know what it's like. Uh, The key is remembering that uh, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. You hear me say that often because that has to be a mindset. If you're expecting everything just to fall in line and everything to roll smoothly and there'll be no hiccups and no disruptions and no disappointments, no delays, no setbacks, then you aren't preparing to really take on life uh, in a challenging manner to stretch out and reach out to achieve things that are worthy, things that have intrinsic value, things that will plant you in the field of greatness. Uh, When you're pursuing the best of yourself, when your goal is excellence, when your quest is to achieve something of significant value, you're going to have difficult moments. If you haven't met challenges, if you haven't met setbacks, you're not striving for something high enough. You're not reaching and pushing and stretching yourself to achieve the fullness of your potential. If you are stretching yourself, if you are setting high goals, then you're going to have challenges. You're going to experience some difficult moments. And sometimes all you need to know is or all that you can know is that you're still breathing. And if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Your, your your life here has purpose. And as long as you are alive, you know there's something for you to do. There's something left. Don't give up. Don't turn around. Don't give in. Uh, that is something that I want you to always understand, no matter what's going on in your life. Before I move on, I want to remind everyone that I'm currently writing book number 25. Um, and to me, I think that's worth celebrating. I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, heck writing one book, uh, I think is something worth worthy of, uh, celebration, no matter who you are and what you do. I think everybody ought to write at least one book. I think everybody has one book in them. If you've lived in this world, you have something to share. Uh, but to get to the point where you have a passion in it at a level that you are uh, writing your 25th book. I think that's something uh, exceptional. And I celebrate uh, myself every chance I get. I don't need anyone. Uh, Hello, moms. Um, I I don't need anyone to celebrate me to feel good about myself. I wake up every day and I give the world, my my, my family, all that I have. Sometimes it's not all that I wish I can give, but it's all that I have at the moment. And I can live with that. And so I don't need anybody to qualify me. I don't need anybody to validate me. Uh, I do that myself. And that's something I tell my clients. You better learn how to start celebrating yourself. You better start learning how to pat yourself on the back. Uh, People are going to call you narcissistic. People are going to call you arrogant. But at the same time, there has to be a consistency in you being celebrated. There has to be a consistency in you being encouraged. Uh, For my Christian people, uh, the Bible says that David encouraged himself because it was at a time that those who would normally uh, be big up in David were the ones who wanted to kill him. Uh, His own people wanted to kill him because of the loss they had experienced. And it says that David encouraged himself. David sought solace in his own personal relationship with God and an understanding of who he was and rose up and encouraged himself and in in time won back 
uh, the approbation of those who wanted him dead by recovering all that had been lost, but it started with him encouraging himself. So um, I encourage you to have that part of you, but I said all that to say that uh, in writing the 25th book, I have made it possible for anyone who wants to to sponsor space in this book to pay tribute to someone, something, or some experience in your life that has made a difference. Uh, and the information is in the description box. Uh, you can uh, sponsor. Uh, there's no minimum sponsorship amount. So with that said, we're going to move on. What, what are we talking about today? Procrastination. Um, procrastination. Um, a while back, and I was reminded of it today because I saw it in a post as I was scrolling. Um, and I saw it in a post and it reminded me. So I went back and pulled the original uh, that I had. And I just kind of looked at it and I remember what went through my mind. Someone had defined procrastination in a way that really got my attention. I have been uh, an advocate of conquering procrastination for a very long time. I'm not one to sit on things. I'm not one to sit up and mull over and in, in, in opportunities. I'm one to sit up and say, hey, I don't have a lot of time. But uh, this one uh, definition or perception of, pro, of uh, procrastination stayed with me. And it, 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 and it was simple. It said that procrastination is the arrogant assumption that God or life owes you another opportunity to do tomorrow what you had the time to do today. Check. That. I mean, just really let that sink in. Procrastination isn't just inactivity. It's a mindset. Procrastination is a mindset that says, I have all the time in the world. I don't have to do it right now. And what I can tell you is if there are no goals, there's no, and there's no set time and there's no uh, urgency for activity, the urgency that is removed takes the possibility out of the equation. See, the possibility that, that, that you're looking for for greatness comes with a sense of urgency that drives you to take action when there's no sense of urgency. That's why you have to put a date on your goals. See, until you put your date on your goals, it's just an idea, it's a thought, it's a wish. It's a desire. But when you put a date on your goal, now there's a sense of urgency because there's a time frame in which things have to be done. And you have to know how much has to be done. And then you can look at the time frame and know how much has to be done each day. But if you don't have a sense of urgency and you are not moving and actively pursuing something, then you're literally blowing time, 86,400 seconds in a day. That never changes. You got 86,400 seconds in a day. About seven hours of that is gonna be sent, spent asleep. So you can cut that to roughly about 54, 55% of the 86,000 is left. Some of that is gonna be spent with family, children, spouses, uh, and that's necessary. That's a part of life. That's a part of truly being balanced. So you got to take that. So now what? Look, you got maybe eight or 10 hours left, right? What you do in that time is going to define your life. Procrastination is the thief of time. Procrastination will rob you of opportunities. The idea that you have an infinite number of, of opportunities is foolish. The thing is, time is, in, 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 in it, with an exception, depending on you talk to, some people think time is your most valued asset. To me, your mind is your most valuable asset because God gave you a mind that aligns with his. What do I mean by that? You can have the mind of God, and when you have the mind of God, you have the answers. You just have to align and find the right frequency, find the right height. You got to stop stressing. You got to see when you, when you stress. 
It takes you off alignment. It takes you off the frequency of God. But you have the mind. And if you have the mind, you have the answers. You have the creativity. You have the imagination. Do you realize all of this came from the imagination of God? It did not exist. And he said, let there. And if, and if you're not a believer in that, you got to understand that the order in this universe demands a designer, meaning that the, pro the probability or possibility of all of the things that have to be in place for this universe to exist in harmony, therefore support life, is astronomical. Something has to hold it in place. There is divine order, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. Now, how you view it and how you see God, I'm going to leave that to you. But what I'm going to tell you is that if all of this came from somewhere and it didn't exist, it had to first be imagined. And the first thing that God gives us is the imagination. Now, we, by the time seven, we done, took, we done snatched it and squeezed it out of our children. Stop, stop daydreaming. Be realistic. Uh, get your head out the clouds. Start focusing on this. You'll probably never be able to do that. Don't, don't focus on that. What you'll probably be able to do and be good at is this. You know, mommy never was able to get do anything more than that. Daddy could only do this, so you'll probably only be able to do that. We force our kids into our limited beliefs all the freaking time, and we rob them of the most precious gift they have, the ability to use their mind to manifest realities that don't cur uh, currently exist. I tell my clients all the time, the way that you're going to walk out of this may not exist now. You might have to create it. You might have to manifest it. You might have to generate it. It may not be something someone else has done already that's going to get you to the place you're trying to go. Stop thinking that you are limited to other people's experiences in this world. God has a plan for you that's only for you, and you got to start manifesting things that are not and treating, treating them as though they were. But you gotta stop procrastinating. You've gotta stop living in a space that paralyzes you because of fear, because you're waiting on the perfect opportunity. Perfect opportunity doesn't exist. The perfect timing doesn't exist. There's always going to be some insinuating circumstances. There's always going to be some, 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 some ancillary realities going on around all the things that you want to do. You're going to have to anchor yourself in your faith. Anchor yourself in the belief in what you're capable of doing. And you're going to have to step out and take action in the midst of adversity and walk in what you believe. That's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what? Things not seen. It ain't faith until you start to walk in the unseen, the unproven, the unexpected. You're going to have to overcome that proclivity to procrastinate. When I created the Science of Conquering Procrastination uh, class, it was because so many people who were coming to me were there. They were stuck. They wanted something, but they weren't moving. They were waiting on somebody to lay out the blueprint. And they weren't moving. Sometimes you walk the blueprint. Somebody had to walk the first mile to tell everybody else what direction to go. If you're going to achieve greatness, you're going to have to be that person out front a lot. Look, I want to help as many people as possible in overcoming procrastination. Uh, I set up this unbelievable class a while ago. And, you know, uh, I do it periodically because it does take a great deal of resources. Um, but I think that you will absolutely enjoy it. Uh, this is an opportunity to work with yours truly over the course of three uh, sessions over the course of a month. Uh, definitely the most affordable course I've ever created um, for $99, four sessions. One session with me is $350. My platinum package is $10,500. 90% of my clients 
of functioning with packages and getting results. What I want you to do is just take a chance to conquer one thing, procrastination. If you can't invest $100 in advancing your life, it's not that you don't have it. It's that you haven't prioritized the importance of doing it. Because I see people saying they don't have money out spending money on some of the most unbelievable things you can ever imagine while suffering and struggling and complaining about where you're at, complaining about hate, hating your job, complaining about not having enough money, complaining about not being able to take a vacation, complaining about living check to check. But I see you out spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on purses, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on sneakers, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on rims for your car, all of this stuff. But you won't spend a hundred dollars to change your life, and you wonder why you stuck. I'm gonna leave that on you. Look, I'm about to get off of here. If you want to sponsor a space in the book, that information there. If you want to enroll in um, the uh, conquering uh, procrastination course, like I said. I don't do this often and it won't last for long because it does take a lot of my resources and it's not really a financial win for me, but it's a chance for me to get fulfillment by working with people and seeing them succeed. And so it's a trade off. But like I said, definitely, if you want to see change and you haven't been able to break the chains of procrastination, let me holler at you. The, the link is in the book. Sign up and uh, someone from uh, the Vision Ethics Institute will reach out and set up your first session. On that note, I'm out here. You guys have an unbelievable day. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I can die on E. And I challenge you to do the same thing. On that note, I'm out here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Yeah, yeah.